Well, it's that time of the year again when people are out raising their blood sugar level, dressing like superheroes or slutty cops. So getting into the swing of things, throughout the month of October, we're going to be taking a look at some good old fashioned horror games. So let's kick things off by taking a look at arguably one of the scariest first person horror games ever made, Amnesia The Dark Descent, developed by Frictional Games in 2010. Despite being one of the finest examples of YouTuber bait, Amnesia The Dark Descent does still offer up some genuinely frightening moments and is truly one of the best first person horror games ever made. In Amnesia, you take on the role of a man named Daniel who finds himself in a creepy castle with little more than a brief recollection of past events. Don't forget. Don't forget. I must stop him. Focus. It should really be called Short Term Memory Loss, The Dark Descent, because before too long, the timeline gets filled in through diary journals and frequent flashbacks triggered as you explore the environment. We soon learn that Daniel was working with a man named Alexander Brennenberg, and the goal of the game is to head to the inner sanctum of the castle to find and kill him. The Dark Descent in the title alludes to the journey itself, but also the slow realization as to what Daniel and Alexander were getting up to prior to Daniel losing his memory. Suffice to say, it's some pretty evil shit. The cradle is ready. Good. Amnesia is hardly a visual powerhouse, but one thing it does quite well is the lighting, which can really look gorgeous at times. Character models are pretty basic, but the areas themselves are detailed well enough that they feel plausible within the context of the story, and the overall design is complex without being too confusing. Using the left mouse button will interact with elements in the game world like doors, cupboards and other various props and the controls are responsive and smooth enough that I never found myself struggling to get anything done. There is some simple inventory management to contend with but nothing on the level of other survival horror games like say Resident Evil. It's more about just reading various notes and being aware of what your current objective is. Then to top it all off, the sound design is just incredible with a really unsettling soundtrack and fantastic incidental sound effects. It's pretty much like porn for the years and a good pair of headphones is an absolute must, as is a darkened room and a low gamma setting. Now Frictional Games really did pioneer this whole first person survival horror genre, where you play as an average Joe in a horrifying situation with practically no way to defend yourself. In the Penumbra series you were given a hammer as a means of defense, but now in Amnesia you've got nothing at all but a lantern and a handful of tinder boxes used to create light sources. Daniel has to monitor both his health and sanity meters, the latter having a pretty adverse effect on how the controls work. Anyone who's played Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth will be familiar with the sanity mechanic and it functions mostly the same in Amnesia. The way it works is that whenever you're in dark areas, Daniel's sanity will begin to slip, causing hallucinations, blurred vision, slow movement speeds and so forth and it can also create an onset of creepy noises that sound like bugs scratching around in your head among a few others. The only way to keep your sanity in check is to complete objectives or stand in a light source for a short period of time. Now this is done by either using your lantern sparingly or lighting the various torches and candles around the castle with the tinder boxes. Now this can however be a bit of a double edged sword as standing in light sources means you've practically got a neon sign pointing at you, making you much easier to spot for nearby monsters. The actual puzzles themselves require a fair bit of exploration and patience as you often need to find a series of items in one particular area then combine them to create a new component before backtracking and interacting with something to proceed onward. Like mixing a bunch of chemicals together to create an acid compound or just simple physics puzzles where you often need to throw a crate or a rock at a destructible object that might be blocking your way. Most of the puzzles are simple enough to figure out and there's only a couple areas where I got really confused but what makes these areas tricky is how you're often avoiding monsters at the same time. Amnesia really only has one enemy type which is a sort of sewn together cadaver that just patrols around until it spots you at which point you're pretty much screwed and often better off just relearning a checkpoint than trying to escape. What's disappointing is how the tension is all but alleviated when you figure out how these enemies work. Most of the time they'll spawn in near your location, making a really loud sound that all but alerts you to their exact position. Then they'll walk around for a bit, putting no effort into actually searching you out, before just walking away and despawning. There's a few scripted encounters that really count as jump scares that'll probably make your heart jump the fuck out of your chest, but most of the time, you simply need to just stand still in a corner somewhere, turn your back to them and wait until they leave. Of course, this doesn't mean that Amnesia is any less scary. This really is a consistently frightening, morbid, depressing, and just intense horror experience. Some of the segments in this game will have you screaming like an absolute bitch. Like an absolute bitch, Sonny Jim. 
there's an area quite late in the game where you have to move through a series of torture chambers and as you approach each of these various devices you get these horrific audio flashbacks of the people that were subjected to these machines all those years ago. Probably one of the most well-known areas in the game is the one where you're in this partially submerged series of corridors where an invisible water monster like prowls around, chasing after you relentlessly if you don't stay on an elevated surface. To escape this thing, you end up throwing body parts into the water to distract it whilst you escape out a nearby door, followed by a gut-wrenching chase sequence as you run for your goddamn life. I can still remember playing this game for the first time way back in 2010 and there's a scripted moment in one of the later levels where a monster starts banging down a door and at the time I remember I screamed so loudly that my girlfriend came rushing in thinking it was an actual emergency. Imagine her response when she realized it was just a six foot tall man child screaming at a video game. Now I don't want to give the impression that amnesia is all about jump scares because that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I think you can count the total jump scares on one hand for the entire campaign. It's more about creating this horribly depressing and dark game world where you uncover this sinister and cruel backstory while you become more and more immersed in your surroundings. That way when that horrible looking monster does finally bang that door down, you're so on edge that you really do cause everyone in your near vicinity to really become concerned for your well-being. Overall, the campaign is about seven or eight hours long and to keep up that kind of intensity for such a long period of time is pretty damn impressive. Now look, there are faults with the game to be sure, but I just feel that they can largely be overlooked because of just how good the horror element of the game is overall. Not to mention the game also supports custom content and has a very active modding community. There's a lot going on here. It's true that Amnesia may have taken a few steps back from Penumbra in a couple of ways, and people might argue about certain mechanics or the simplicity of some of the puzzles. But as a horror game, something you can sit down with, play and be scared shitless, there are a few other titles that can compete. Yes, it's been slightly ruined by the abundance of shithead Let's Players on YouTube, but if you haven't had it spoiled for you, Amnesia The Dark Descent is a guaranteed good time.